Hello, good morning. Welcome to Hour of Destiny Daily Devotional and Spiritual Breakfast with Reverend Mike Eniola. Welcome to Saturday, the eighth day of April 2023. Open your mouth this morning and be saying Amen as I pray for you today. We are still in the season of celebration. We are celebrating Easter, victory over death, and victory over all principalities and powers. Somebody is hearing me this morning. I want to pray for you by the authority of the Lord that you will prevail over every battle confronting your life in the name of Jesus Christ. As we celebrate Easter, victory over all the attacks of the kingdom of darkness. So somebody who is hearing me this morning, you will celebrate, you will rejoice over every battle facing and confronting your life today in Jesus' name. As the grave could not hold Jesus, he came out triumphantly. So I am praying for somebody this morning that no power will keep you down. The enemy will not succeed and bow your head down. You are coming out of it. The Lord will lift you up. The Lord will raise you up. The Lord will give you reasons, several reasons to be thankful today and to rejoice before the Lord. In Jesus' name, I want to pray for everyone that will be traveling today. God Almighty will prosper your journey. You will go and return in peace. All of you that have occasion, whether wedding or whatever ceremony you have today, I pray with you that all will end in praise. It shall be successful and God's name shall be glorified. In Jesus' name. Everyone that is hearing me this morning, I want to pray for divine provision. I want to pray for heavenly supply. The Lord will provide for your needs. The Lord will supply everything you need. The Lord will make all things to be beautiful for you. I want to pray for widows this morning. I pray that the Almighty God, Jesus, the husband of the widows, He will stand by you and help you to carry your load. Some of you are very young in your in very young widows. I pray that the Almighty God will reorder your steps and give you a fresh beginning. Also, widowers, I pray for you that the Lord will stand by you and God will give you a new beginning of life. In Jesus' name. I also want to pray for orphans. There are children, there are people, even adults today who, who were orphaned when they were, you know, when they were little. And the traces of lack of parents can still be found or still be seen in them. So you are hearing me this morning, you are an orphan. I pray that the Lord will stand by you. David said, when my parents forsook me, the Lord took me over. So I pray that the Lord, who can never forsake you nor reject you, will come and be your father and your mother and be everything to you. In Jesus' name, you are blessed. <clears throat> All of you that are praying for me, all of you that are supporting this noble and global assignment, I pray the Lord will support you. The Lord will lift you up. God will command his blessings to continually rest upon you in Jesus' name. You are blessed and you are lifted. Somebody shout amen. I believe as I receive. Praise God. Beloved, this Saturday, we are still reading the book of John chapter 7. Our, our Bible reading today is taken from John chapter 7 and chapter 8. The gospel according to St. John chapters 7 and 8. Yesterday, we read chapters 5 and 6. Please read chapters 7 and 8 today. And God will minister to you. Today, I want us to take some testimonies. But I have a chart here, which I believe is going to minister to somebody. In fact, we have to sort for the permission of the person who sent it. We sought, we sought for her permission and she granted us the permission to share it. But there are some things that I'm not going to read out. I'm going to share. I'm going to share some information. I'm not going to mention the name. Neither will I mention the city where it is coming from. But I believe, I believe that it will minister to somebody. It's a, you know, it's a fallout or the feedback from the just concluded message of the battle you cannot fight alone. How you need to share your body. How I told the husband not to hide anything from their wife and wife not to hide anything from their husband. Just listen now. He said, good morning, sir. I'm so-so person from so-so place, sir. After listening to your message, I decided to share a secret I found out about my husband. I did not know that he was infected with HIV 
and we have lived together for nine years. I had the first child, and I was expecting the second baby, but it was not forthcoming. If I tell him, let's go to the hospital, he will say he's okay, that nothing is wrong with him. With him, not until he became, he started, he became constantly sick. He was still hiding it until I insisted and followed him to the hospital. The, the bag he was carrying, he dropped it and went inside to see the doctor. And he warned me not to touch it. And I said, and after going in, I said, why is he warning me not to touch this bag? So I took the bag and opened it and I saw a container of drugs. I took it and I hid it inside my own bag. And I went to ask two, two doctors. They told me that the drugs was for HIV people. I was really scared. Immediately I ran, immediately I went and run a test to know my HIV status. And to God be the glory, I am free. After two days, he asked me, after two days, I asked him, who owns the drugs and what the drugs was for? He laughed and told me that it will take me years to know. It will take me two years to know what the drugs are for and the kind of human being he is. And he was expecting me to be sick already. Already, I was already pregnant of the second baby. And since I was not falling sick, he said he's not the father of the unborn child. And I told him what God cannot do does not exist. If you are planning evil for me, it will surely go back to you. When the family came, instead of, take, instead of them taking him to the hospital, they took him to a spiritualist. And the spiritualist said that my presence in the house was the one making him to be sick. So they sent me out of the house with my son and my condition. People saw me and gave me money. I'm now back to my father's house. Thank God I delivered safely another baby boy. After I left, he died. Now the family are accusing me of killing him. And they are, and they are accusing me of killing him. And their plan now is to kill me and take away everything in, in the house, which were my entitlement. Please, sir, I need your prayers because I am innocent of what they are accusing me of. Do you hear that? Do you see her wickedness? Hallelujah. Now the family of the late husband now have the God to be accusing this innocent person of adultery because I, I just have to stop there. They said, since the father, they said, since she was not falling sick and that they were going to do the paternal, I mean, they are going to do tests to confirm the paternity of the child. They were accusing her of sleeping around where at, nothing like that. Do you see why we said we should always be open, husband and wife should be open. As a man, why will you be hiding your health status from your wife? As a wife, why will you be hiding things from your husband? Learn from this story. Our beloved sister, thanks for giving us the permission to share this. God bless you. Please learn from this in Jesus' name. Let me take just two more testimonies. The first one was not a testimony, but a chart to confirm that what we preach, God is backing it up. This person said, good evening, sir. Here is my testimony. Who says God doesn't answer prayer? As what he cannot do does not exist. I had been on the process of my transcript for further education to further my education over a year, and all hope seemed lost. But just yesterday, God perfected it, and my transcript delivered into my mailbox and my WhatsApp. I believe that God of perfection will see me through my academic pursuit with more than enough provisions, and I will come back to testify again in Jesus' name. Dear Reverend Mike, your voice shall never cease to be heard and heard till Jesus comes and heaven at last. God bless you and your crew, sir. I am so so person from Malabo, a man all the way from Ikutura, Guinea. To God be the glory for how the world is making impact and blessing life across the world. Let me take another testimony. This one says, Good morning, Daddy. My name is Soso Persi from Abuja. Please share my testimony. Towards the end of the fasting for this year, you asked us to write what we wanted God to do and put it in an envelope and you were praying on them. I was believing God for an international conference which is going to be my ever international traveling. There were so many hindrances to the traveling ranging from fund, uh, fund approval, 
he visa problem, canceled flight. But to the glory of God, I traveled back to Nigeria from abroad last Sunday. Hallelujah to the Most High God. God will continue to prosper your ministry in Jesus' name. Amen. God of possibility did that. Another one, testimony, testimony, testimony. The God of Reverend Mike Enola is a faithful and mighty God indeed. I have come back to testify to the goodness and mercy of God upon his children. On November 23rd, 2022, I sent a prayer request to our daddy in the Lord concerning my brother, who lives in the United Kingdom and works as a medical doctor. I recounted how he was persecuted for five horrible years in this place of work and, and in this place of work, and the court case has been on since then. That Daniela replied and said, God will intervene and it will end in praise. I claimed it and I shouted a very loud amen. And I continued to send the daily devotionals to him. And after three months, my dear people of God, the answer to these prayers came on, Tuesday, on Thursday, 2nd of March. He finally won the case and to the glory of God Almighty. Daddy, may God continue to bless and keep you safe. And his anointing upon your life will never cease. More unction to function. Amen. Let me take the last one for today. Daddy, good morning, sir. Thank God for your family and the ministry. Thank God for your life, your family and ministry. And God bless you, sir. I joined this platform last year. I joined this platform last year through my sister. And I've been listening to your teaching and following the instructions. I also listening to testimony and also sharing it too. But I've been asking myself, when will I share my own testimony with others? Then in my spirit, I had a voice who says, so so person, you just got married in the... He say, I had a voice say, John, you got married in year 20, 20, 2016, February 2nd. You have three daughters. You and your family never go to bed without food. None of you have ever been admitted in the hospital. I have not allowed any problem bigger than you come near you. In fact, it came a time I don't want to hear test. I don't want to hear testimony because for me, I don't have testimony. But today, sir. I come to understand that God has been so faithful to me and my family. I may not have house, car, and no work today, but my testimony is this. God is good to me and my family. Thanks and God bless you, Daddy. My name is also Percy from Kaduna. Praise God. We thank the Lord. Thank God for correcting you. Every day you sleep and you wake up is a plus. And it's a testimony. I bless God for everyone whose testimonies have been read and shared. May the Lord give you your own testimonies too. In Jesus' name. And I thank God for that, our sister. The Lord will keep you. The Lord will keep your children. No matter what the family of your late husband try to carry out, it will never backfire on you. The Lord will defend you and he will fight that battle for you to the end. In Jesus' name. I wish, I wish everybody a peaceful and wonderful Easter celebration. Please remember today, Saturday, read your two portions of the Bible, John chapter 7 and John chapter 8. God bless you. Have a fulfilling weekend. In Jesus' name, amen.